Hello, welcome to the Biochemist Area Pocket Lecture on Hemiacetals and Hemiketals. I am Doc Bao and this lecture is very important in understanding the cyclization process of monosaccharides. This lecture is short, just around 15 minutes and we will just breeze through the following topics in rapid succession. First is we will look into the concept of hemiacetals and hemiketals, why they are formed. In carbohydrates, their formation is important to achieve stability as a cyclic structure vis-a-vis -vis an open structure seen in fissure projections. Next is we will look at how glucose cyclizes by forming a hemiacetal structure leading to, to the formation of your pyranosis. And subsequently, the formation of a cyclic structure leads to the formation of a stereogenic or a chiral carbon or which we will see later on an anomeric carbon that will now result in the formation of your two isomers, the alpha and beta anomers. The shifting of these isomers from one form to the other, from alpha to beta and beta to alpha, is a process known as mutarotation. And this is the reason for the existence of different forms of anomers in physiologic solution. And lastly, we will now look at how ketoses, or sugars with a ketone functional group like fructose, cyclizes to form your hemiketals in the form of either furans or pyrans. Before jumping straight into the deep dive of cyclic carbohydrate hemiacetals and hemiketals, let us quickly remember how they are formed. When an alcohol oxygen adds to the carbonyl carbon of the aldehyde as seen here, hemiacetals are formed. This reaction occurs through the nucleophilic attack of the hydroxyl group of the alcohol at the electrophilic carbonyl group of either an aldehyde or a ketone group. Given that alcohols are weak nucleophiles, the attack on the carbonyl carbon is usually advanced by the addition of a proton to the carbonyl carbon as we can see here. When this reaction happens with an aldehyde, the resulting product is a hemiacetal. On the other hand, when this takes place with a ketone, the resulting molecule is referred to as a hemiketal. The reaction we see here basically illustrates the formation of an intermolecular hemiacetal. However, hemiacetals are intrinsically not stable and tend to favor the parent aldehyde. Thus, to achieve stability, Molecules comprised of both an alcohol and a carbonyl group, like aldehydes and ketones, can undergo intermolecular reaction to form a cyclic hemiacetal or hemiketal respectively. This process will result in cyclic forms that are a lot more stable. The size of the ring highly determines the stability of cyclic hemiacetals and hemiketals. It is established that five or six member drinks are generally favored stereochemically. And this gives stability to most sugars. As an example, and which we will see later on, glucose exists 99% of the time as cyclic hem hemiacetals with a measly 1% existing in the open form. Intermolecular hemiacetal and hemiketal formation are frequently encountered in sugar chemistry. Shown here is a molecule of glucose with formula C6H1206. Glucose is represented here in Fischer projection. If you remember, Fischer projection is a convention used to depict a stereo formula in two dimensions without destroying the stereochemical information. Here, the horizontal lines represent the bands projecting from the plane of the paper towards us, the viewer, and the vertical lines represent the bands projecting away from the viewer. And as you can see here, glucose as an aldose has an aldehyde group here, plus five hydroxyl groups. As we can see, one, two, three, four, and five. Thus, what we have here is a condition wherein we have a molecule that possesses both a carbonyl, a carbonyl group, an aldehyde, plus your different alcohol groups. Thus, biochemically, glucose can form an intramolecular cyclic hemiacetal. 
In the next slide, we will see how glucose can be cyclized to hemiacetyl structure from its open structure. As we have discussed, hemiacetyl formation occurs when the nucleophilic hydroxyl group of an alcohol attacks the carbonyl carbon of an aldehyde functional group. In the case of glucose specifically, this reaction occurs intramolecularly between the hydroxyl group that here that we see is attached to carbon 5 and the carbonyl carbon, the carbon of aldehyde, resulting in the formation of a more stable cyclic structure. In the case of glucose, a six-membered ring is thermodynamically more stable than a five-membered ring, thus favoring the formation of a six-membered ring over that of a five-membered ring. As a result of the cyclization process, the groups will not anymore be located on the left or either side of the backbone. Rather, the groups will be oriented either upwards or downwards in relation to the ring structure. From the illustration here, we can deduce that the groups located on the left side of the backbone in the fissure projection, for example, the hydroxyl group attached to carbon-3, is oriented on the left. However, going to the Hayward projection, the hydroxyl group that is attached to carbon-3, 1, 2, 3, will be oriented upwards. Subsequently, Groups that are located on the right, for example, the hydroxyl group attached to carbon-4, will now be oriented downwards in relation to the ring. And more significantly, in the process, what we can see here is that you will have a, four, a new chiral carbon that is formed. This is originally the carbonyl carbon of the functional group. And this is your, what is now is called your anomeric carbon. The nucleophilic attack of hydroxyl group on the carbonyl carbon can either occur above or below the pi band. Thus, it can result to two diastereoisomer called your anomers. Let us now look more closely at carbon-1. This was once the carbonyl carbon of the aldehyde functional group. If we will now focus on this carbon in this Hayworth projection, we will now see that this has become a chiral carbon, or as we remember, a carbon that is attached to four different substituent groups. This is now what we call your anomeric carbon. We can see here that the OH group attached to this anomeric carbon can either exist in the same side with the CH2OH group as we can see here, or it can be on the opposite side if the hydroxyl group is located downwards. Thus, glucose can now exist in two different anomeric isom isomer forms or anomers depending if the hydroxyl group is on the same side of the CH2OH group or on the opposite side. These two forms are referred to as anomers of glucose and are classified as either alpha or beta isomers as we will be expounded in the next slide. Moving on, if we move from the Hayworth projection as seen here to that of a chair conformation, we can see here that the group pointing upwards in the Hayworth projection will now become equatorial or horizontal. For example, as we can see here, the anomeric OH group is oriented upwards in the Hayworth projection but in the chair conformation, it is now described as equatorial. Consequently, the groups pointing downwards, for example, in this case, the OH group attached to carbon-2, it will now become H-shell or perpendicular to the horizon. Going back to the two anomeric forms of carbohydrates and looking at the two illustrations here, if the anomeric hydroxyl group is cis or on the same side of the CH2OH group or the carbon-6 group, then it is considered to be the beta anomer of glucose. If the hydroxyl group and the CH2OH groups are belonging to the same side. However, it will be the alpha anomer if the anomeric hydroxyl group is located on the opposite side of the plane 
as that of your CH2OH group or the C6 group as seen here. In water, the ring closing hem acetyl reaction of glucose occurs in the forward and reverse direction, resulting in the spontaneous opening up and closing of the ring in an equilibrium concentration of the two anomers. Due to the steric hindrances, the beta anomer of glucose accounts for approximately 63% of the concentration, while the alpha anomer accounts for only around 36%. The straight chain or the open form of glucose accounts only for 1% of the concentration. It is, this is what is referred to as mutual rotation. The interconversion from the alpha anomer to the beta anomer and vice versa resulting to the change in the optical rotation when the corresponding stereo centers interconvert. Let us now proceed to, to discuss hemiketal formation in sugars. A hemiketal is a compound with the general for formula seen here. And it is formed by the reaction of a ketone, which we know is represented by the formula RC double bond O R prime with that of an alcohol. We have just seen the cyclization of aldehyde sugars, the aldoses, which possess an aldehyde group and hydroxyl groups. But what happens if the carbonyl group in the sugar is a ketone rather than an aldehyde? To review, let's look at this structure seen here, which is fructose. Fructose is a ketose because it possesses a ketone group with a carbon 2 for its carbonyl carbon and five hydroxyl groups as such. Now, one, two, three, four, and five. But instead of cyclizing to a, to a hemiacetal, it behaves differently. It cyclizes to a hemiketal instead. But since the hydroxyl groups at carbons five and carbon six can attack the carbonyl group at carbon two, there are in fact two ways in which a molecule of fructose can cyclize. Let us look at the first way. In the first case, looking at the Fischer projection of D fructose, the hydroxyl group that is attached to C5, the hydroxyl group attached to C5 attacks the carbonyl group that is located in carbon 2 via nucleophilic attack and in a way will now form a hemiketal. hemiketal. The, the product is now a five membered ring, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this ring structure is known as a furan. Sugars in a furan conformation are known as furanoses and this particular product is called a fructofuranose. We can see here that the same convention applies. Groups located on the left side of the backbone on a fissure projection is oriented above the plane of the ring in Hayworth projection. So here we can see that the hydroxyl group that is attached to carbon 3 that is located on the left side of the backbone is oriented upward in the Hayworth projection. And in this case, this is considered as the alpha anomer since the anomeric hydroxyl group that is attached to carbon 2 is located on the opposite side of the CH2OH group of C6. As mentioned, the second scenario in the formation of your hemiketal from fructose exists. The hydroxyl group attached to carbon 6 attacks the carbonyl group that is attached to C2, resulting not to a five-membered ring, but to a six-membered ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is what we call a pyran form of fructose. The product is called the fructopyranose in analogy with the six-membered ring of pyran. Thank you for watching this episode for this playlist. Check out the other videos in this playlist and please do subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified of new video episodes that will be uploaded regularly.